Welcome to Dynamo's Dozen, the podcast that we bring you each and every single week where I talk about whatever may be on my mind from pro wrestling, sports, entertainment, music, movies, musically, fresh socks and jocks, and everything in between, never forgetting the talc. And on today in Ireland, that is St. Paddy's Day, we crack a toast in tribute to the bad guy, Scott Hall. Uh, who passed away um, probably a little little less than 48 hours ago. Um, so today it's not going to be it's not going to be a completely sad show. I know me and Noel can get emotional on these shows, so we're going to try and do our best to uh, give the bad guy Chico Ramon uh, the best tribute that we can do because it's very easy to get upset about these things, but it's also it's also very easy to look at a career that was full of ups and downs and. Uh, the ones that were up were really up. So, uh, Noel, welcome to the show once again. I know you wanted to be a part of this one. I see you've got the that beautiful shirt of that famous, famous, probably the, most, the most moment fam- in wrestling ever. Maybe, probably, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And him, and him front and center when it happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now definitely you have to be a part of this. I mean, if you're a wrestling fan and you're not a Razor Ramon, Scott Hall, NWO fan, and it's uh, you know you need to check your history and <laughs> and uh, yeah. ask yourself well, what is it in wrestling that you really love you know these guys were <laughs> they brought so much good sprinkled with a little bit of bad but we, we kind of loved them for both um but yeah i don't know it was just it was shocking to hear it you know i, I suppose as we get older as fans we start to lose certain elements of stuff that we grew up on and stuff that we cherish and stuff that we moments that we cling on to. We speak about it all the time on these shows. Um, <laughs> we do too many of these shows, to be honest, where we look back at people when they pass away. It just yeah, including the pod man, obviously with the, the vault that we have with yeah, the pod man. I mean, a lot absolutely. of them have been about that. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, 60, 63 years of age is, is no age at all. No. Um, and and I suppose the circumstances as well, the fact that he had gone in for hip surgery and then we hear that he had had a, um, a triple heart attack and had to be put on life support. And then to get that Instagram post, I think it was an Instagram post from Kevin Nash. It was Instagram, yeah. Literally, literally saying goodbye and the way he said goodbye and all was just absolutely heart wrenching. Um, and kind of a kind of a bolt there with the blue, not expected really. Um, yeah. Until we had sort of found out and heard that he'd he had had these complications, um, but yeah, sad times. Another another legend gone. Another another part of our fandom plucked away from us somewhat. Um, yeah, yeah, but um, unbelievable, unbelievable talent. Um, certainly, um, the word legend at the time is thrown around in the business far too easy. I think. Um, but there is certain guys out there, and he would be one of them, who has definitely left his mark on the business. And I think in 20, 30 years' time, fans will still be looking back at those amazing ladder matches and all that kind of stuff that he did, the NWO and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I, I have to say I concur with all of that. Um, even a lot of people probably know I'm not the biggest you know, Scott Hall fan over the last few years, and I know I've said... I've called a lot of the stuff that he said about certain wrestlers out and all and kind of been a bit funny. But then again, that was just him, wasn't it? That was his, you know, I think you, you, you talk to anybody that seemed to be around Scott Hall, you wouldn't know whether he was ribbon or whether he's not because he's just constantly fucking busting balls. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, there was kind of a, there was, it was a kind of, um, a bit of a cheekiness a lived, a, There was, there was a lived, a kind of when we talk about living the gimmick, um, there was an element to live in the gimmick, gimmick, but there was a sincerity to him in relation to the business. Yeah. Um, and I remember I went to an evening with Scott Hall here in Dublin. Um, it was put on by a local promotion. And um, we had a great night. We got to meet him, got autographs, got to talk to him and all. There was no rush. He took time for everyone. There was no panic. But I remember um, Jamie Coleman, friend of the show who we know, Jamie um, yeah. Uh, was was doing the interviewing on stage that evening. It was in the, the Tivoli upstairs in the kind of theater part of it. And he asked me about uh, he asked him about just wrestling in general. And he spoke about his son Cody at the time. His son yeah. Cody at the time, I think, was wrestling a bit in New Japan. 
That's correct. And um, he asked, he asked Scott, was the next pathway for Cody was it to go into NXT and into WWE and continue the family legacy and all that kind of stuff. And he said, no, not really. What he wanted to do was he wanted Cody to forge his own path in the business and not be living in the shadow of his father. And he also said that he wanted Cody, the ideal situation for a wrestler coming up in the business now was to go around the whole world and experience all the different styles of wrestling. Mm -hmm. So the European style, the British style, New Japan, all the American, all the different types of wrestling. And he said before he, he wanted him to settle on what he wanted to do. And I thought that was kind of like, it was, it was a nice insight into his thinking mm -hmm. in terms of the business and, you know, the, um, the high regard that he held the business in. Um, I mean, it would be very easy. I mean, Scott Hall could make a phone call and it's going to be in NXT in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, there's no doubt about that. But um, he wanted them to, figure it out nearly like the old territory system yeah. to go into all these different pick up all these different things and i just thought it was a it was a poignant moment you know and then um, yeah. the news coming out the last few days and the passing of them and stuff like that made me reflect on that night when i met him yeah um, yeah. yeah you do don't you like when when legends kind of pass or whatever when someone passes and you've been in the presence of the man or woman yeah um it always does kind of bring it home like uh, and it shows these aren't just guys and girls on tv like they're actual human yeah. beings as well and um i think one of the one of the funnier tributes i read today i can't recall um the lady i think it was who brought him into a local promotion and he was saying it was flooded outside and he was trying to find his way to get to the locker room and she said here look come with me i'll show you the best way because we'll avoid all the fans because you're going to get swamped and he goes, hey, you think I'm going to avoid it? You think I'm going to avoid a pop? <laughs> you probably read it. I just yeah. thought that's the guy, you know what I mean? Um, like, as I say, there's plenty. It's very, it's a very, um, it seems to be, let's be honest as well. You know, when someone passes as well, um, you know, you usually get the internet flooded and flooded and flooded with legends here, legends there. It's been a lot of kind of names that really haven't come out and paid any sort of tribute, which is, I don't know for whatever reason that that they're, they're probably personal reasons or whatever because there was a lot of people that probably weren't Scott Hall fans and and he probably rubbed a, a lot of people up the wrong way. Um, so it's it's kind of you've probably noticed that because we were only talking about it today, weren't we? Um, he yeah. seemed to be a kind of a character that was like I guess like all the click, you know what I mean? They you either liked them or you hated them. Um, yeah, like look look the reality of the situation is that group stepped on a lot of people as well and you can't dismiss that yeah um, maybe that's what it is maybe that's the best way of saying it yeah maybe yeah and, I, and i'm sure and i'm sure it'll be the same situation when sean passes away or when kevin passes away or something like that there'll be people who'll come out who did well out of it who became part of the nwo who rode that kind of gravy train a little bit they did have an impact on the business some of it came Definitely. through and in, in a kind of a self-serving selfish kind of way but there's no doubt about it that they did raise the profile of the business and they did raise the payouts across the board. Definitely. Um, yeah. And, and, and are responsible somewhat for that. Now, whether, whether the payouts across the board were anywhere near the payouts within the group, um, history would tell you that it wasn't. Um, but I mean, there was guaranteed it, money though, at least, you know what I mean? They brought guaranteed yeah. money to a lot of, to a lot of families. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I mean, look, look, the, the, the Hogan turn, the NWO, the Outsiders, the stuff that they did, it, it was absolutely groundbreaking and it gripped us for years in terms of the business. Yeah. And I, I, I just think there is certain people out there who probably, you know, may not drop a tribute or may not drop a, a tweet or whatever it is. There's other people out there who sometimes it's difficult for them to True. express what they want to yeah. say because point. they've they've lost a guy who they've known for years. And as I said, when I met him, as you said, it's different when you meet these guys, because so many people who are wrestling fans don't get to meet these guys. Yeah. And if you haven't, if you haven't met them, they're that kind of superstar, almost not even human. It's mm. only when you've met them and you've spent some time and you, 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 you talk to them and you, you talk to them about the things that you cherish that they did and stuff like that. And certain situations, stuff like that, when they pass away, then it becomes very human. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good point you make because you know that like it actually cripples me to this very, very day knowing that uh, 
you were at a, a similar show with Roddy Piper and everyone who knows yeah. the show knows that Roddy Piper is one of my all-time heroes and you had actually had a free ticket for me. I remember yeah. 2015, I think it was, and I had a yeah. prior engagement I remember that I couldn't go to it. Yeah. And then it was a couple of weeks later, he was, uh, you know, he was gone. So you, you have to kind of cherish these things. And in fairness, I'm not here to, you know, to bad milk, um Scott Hall, even though, you know, as I said, I might have questioned certain things. But look, we do that as humans anyway. That's that's our our, our job as a broadcast journalists. We're going to call people out for certain things they say, but we're not here to judge. Um, one thing, I think the biggest tribute that I could give to Scott Hall from just from the outside looking in, having never met the man, is we all remember that phone call. We all remember that video of him being drunk, blah, blah, blah. He had his own demons. I've certainly never judged people for having demons. It can happen to the best of us. We know that. Um, Everyone has their own demons in some way, shape or form. Absolutely. It's easy to throw stones, you know, and a lot of times people that are throwing stones are in glass houses and it's not a wise move. Um, but we all remember that phone call that basically Dallas, met, I think it was Dallas and Pac, wasn't it? Pac had given Dallas the sus and said, listen, Scott's not doing well. Mm. And of course, Dallas reached out, they called him and Scott was not in a good place at that time. And I think the biggest tribute I could give him as a human being looking on the outside is how he committed to getting his life back together because we saw it in the Jake documentary when he was wheeled in in the wheelchair, very different looking human being. And yeah. he rebuilt himself to the point where Niall Hogan and many other fans across the world were actually able to go and listen to the wisdom of the man mm-hmm. at a seminar. And, you know, he had his battles with, you know, with substance or whatever, but he always bounced back from it. You know what I mean? And I think that's that's the best tribute I could pay someone like that from a human level. Forget about what he's done in the ring. To come back from what he did on a human level yeah. um, and fight for his life and help train his kid and, you know, be inducted into the Hall of Fames and be there with his brothers, you know, to click. And um, that's, you know, at least he got to go out having done that because if he had a went the way he did before Dallas, you know, helped him. And, and he helped himself too. I mean, don't forget, yeah. Dallas always says that these guys like have to want to help themselves. And he did. So I, uh, I commend Scott Hall on being brave enough and, you know, strong enough to be able to, uh, to do all that first and foremost. But I see, uh, let's try and lighten the mood a little bit because I see there's a lovely little title belt that's just over your shoulder there. That's almost, yeah. uh, that's almost synonymous with the bad guy, Reza Ramon, absolutely, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Talk about some yeah. of the, you know, some of the highlights. I mean, we kind of, I suppose yourself and myself would have remembered him kind of just as he was a, a kind of a, I wouldn't say he was a job guy, but very much so an underneath guy in WCW, um, part of the Diamond Studs with DDP and all. But um, when he got into WWE in 1993, I mean, that's where he really took off, didn't he? Yeah, that character just was so appealing to people when he came in. And it was just, if you talk about timing, you know what I mean? His timing coming in was exquisite, you know? And you just, you look at what evolved out of that then. You talk about the two ladder matches that are just pristine to this day and and laid the path and the groundwork for all the future stuff that's gone in terms of ladder matches and stuff like that. When, when we look at ladder matches and we talk about ladder matches, this is what we compare them to. Yeah. This is the, this is the, the standard. Um, but I mean, some of the other stuff he did, I mean, the, the tag Royal Rumble, the end, Royal but, Rumble 1993 with Bret Hart. My God. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's, if anybody's not seen that match, um, mm. do yourself a, a favor and go and see that little thing about Scott Hall, Noel, you mentioned timing a lot there. Um, one of the like, because I think Scott in his prime, he was billed at about six seven, was he? Yeah, he he would he would have been fairly close. He would have been billed at that, but he wouldn't have been that height from meeting him. From meeting him, he would have been about six five, six, maybe six three, six four. So six, maybe three, six four. So well, then he probably lost a couple of inches later in life because he would have. Of course, yeah, absolutely. And, and, yeah. But I'd yeah. say in his prime, he probably you probably would have been a good solid six five in his prime. Yeah. So, but. Yeah. A really big motherfucker, <laughs> really, really yeah. big. Like, yeah. uh, when I watched that match again, uh, the other day with Brett, just for example, and then I watched obviously WrestleMania 10, which is my god, 
Um, I, I, I challenge anyone that says Sean wrestled the ladder in that match to come fight me. Uh, that's mm. that's that's not the case. Um, unless you look like Scott Hall, don't come fight me. Um, mm. <laughs> but one thing I was going to say about timing, I think he's one of the most underrated in the ring of men of his size. Like we hear Scott Hall for the character he was, but I think he's a very very underrated worker in terms of how good he was in the ring. One thing that I loved about Scott Hall was his punches because they almost looked like slaps. But yeah. when he threw them, he got yeah. into them and he, he really yeah. stamped the foot well and you could hear the slap. And they, I just thought they always looked absolutely fantastic. I think he he was very, very underrated in the ring. I don't know whether you agree or disagree with that. I, I don't know whether it was underrated. I, I suppose people go back and they look at his career and they, they ask the question that that question, that elephant that's always in the room, never won a world title. You know, that kind of way. To, and that kind of, did he need to? No, though? he didn't. And that, that would lead on. My, my point that I was going to make was, if you think of his runs with the Intercontinental belt, he made the Intercontinental belt feel like a world title. Sure, so sure. from that point of view, we didn't need it. And then when we talk about timing as well, his timing of his rise into the business through those IC runs coincided with guys who were in the world title picture. So if you remember how stacked it was at those times, there was unfortunately just no space. We, we talk about it similar to... Um, True, it's a good point. You know, Mr. Mr. Perfect as well, you know what I mean? Rick it's, Rude. It's, it's a very similar situation, yeah. Rick Rude. You know, these these guys are the foundation of the business, you know, not dissimilar to Brad either. They're just, they're the workhorses, the foundation that, that, that the business was kind of built on. And then you had Hogan, of course, who brought in the stardom and brought it to another level and all that kind of thing. And, you know, Warrior K. Look, I mean, who are the guys that we think about? Me and you are very big collectors of wrestling memorabilia. So when wrestling memorabilia becomes available to boy, who do we think about? Warrior, Hogan, Macho, NWO, Hogan, Scott Hall, Razor Ramon. Yep. These are the guys we tend to collect. I put a little sort of like, um, nearly like a little shrine together in the shop the other day when he passed. And, and one of the things that's in there, funny enough, you mentioned it, is the original VHS from the Royal Rumble 1993 is in there. Oh. And I had the original, I had the Hasbro in there. I had a little NWO face mask. I had an NWO, funny enough, we have these little bottles of sanitizer from True COVID. And yeah. one of them has the NWO belt on it and stuff like that. A couple oh. of little bits and pieces like that in. Um, I found an old WWF magazine and the centerpiece was him and Macho. So I put the magazine into the cabinet as well, and I opened it up and put it in one of those pocket things. Yeah. And the magazine's open with the centerpiece open. So just oh. little bits like that and all. And it's um yeah. obviously I had the poster that he signed on the night, and I um, I have a Funko Pop there that he signed on the night as well. It's in the back in the collection there as well. Yeah. So few few nice pieces to remember him boy. Um, but yeah, he just you know like he's just. Some of those things, like you can pick out moments in there, like the, the one I always think about, Survivor Series 92, you know, sure. with himself and Flair versus Perfect and Savage. You know what I mean? Just little, little things like that that people, everyone kind of goes to the Brett match and the ladder matches. And then, of course, we'd be dismissive if we didn't mention the WrestleMania match with Austin. That should have been such an iconic match. And we've often spoken about this in the past. Sometimes when you bring real life into the storyline of wrestling, Sometimes it knocks it out of the park and sometimes it's the worst decision in the world. And with that one, it's the worst decision in the world because it, it played on his demons. Um, and unfortunately, the match didn't deliver both in the build-up and in the actual match. But when you think about that match, if you were fantasy booking today, what a match that would be in terms of a WrestleMania match, you know what I mean? Just yeah. just sort of delivered in a different way. Do you know what? It was. Uh, <coughs> I would agree with that. And I, I have to say, before I uh, get corrected, um, on YouTube, I meant to say that he came into WWE kind of late 1991, 1992. I mentioned 93, but I obviously yeah. had that that Royal Rumble match on uh, on my mind. Yeah, it's um, I'm of the same thinking. I remember obviously being really salivating at the prospect of of that match with Austin. You know, thinking these are two guys that could potentially go together. You know mm. what I mean? Um, yeah. and it didn't live up, but. I think one of the things with um, with Scott Hall was he had he had main event level status, obviously not having held a world title. And then there's an argument to be made that would you consider him more of a tag guy, considering the run him and Nash had? 
You know what I mean? Because obviously him and Nash, um, I mean, they made their own path. They pretty much made their own decisions. So it was almost like Scott, when he got to the WWE, wanted to be in the tag side of things. Do you know what I mean? Um, and forged a hell of a career in doing so. <laughs> yeah, I suppose when you think about it, you think about it nearly in relation to kind of um, Triple H. If you think about Triple yeah. H, and you think about what happened there with the curtain call and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys are very, very comfortable within factions mm. and not necessarily overly comfortable, you know, when they're on their own, yeah. sailing their own ship. So you always have that comfort feeling that there's a protection there because look, the business is riddled with paranoia. Even Sean didn't paranoia. Right on his own when you yeah. think about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, you think about it, like when, when you're there, if you know your brothers are behind you, your road buddies, the guys who have gone through thick and thin, the guys who have walked out on promotions and turned their back on big money to take that risk to go elsewhere and stuff like that and all. Yeah. And you've turned around and go, you know something? I'll go with you. You know what I mean? I'll take that risk. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, a cert, there's a certain bond there, you know? And, and it kind of leads us into, I mean, one, one of the things I, I talk about is um, the, the Wolfpack thing, where he turned on Kevin and went to a Hogan. Yes, remember? I love which that. Is, which I is love which that. is like wh whoever booked that was just genius because look, him and Kevin are like you know, Kim and Kevin Nash are basically like conjoined twins, and then you've Waltman there as well. Sean was there. That Triple was when H you somewhere. had uh, that was when you had I think it was late nineteen ninety eight, and you had um, early ninety nine, and you had the NWO Wolfpack and the NWO yeah. Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. and the really? Wolfpack of course, and the Wolfpack of course. It, the, the decision suited them as well because the Wolfpack at the time, if you remember, Nash was a face yeah, and Hogan was the heel. So, like, he obviously turned around and he goes, well, I don't know whether I fancy that face stuff. I'll go over here and still be the heel yeah. with Hogan, you know what I mean? So, but it was kind of, it was kind of cool, that kind of thing. The other thing I looked at yesterday, I watched the match yesterday. I would definitely tell your viewers, go back and look at it. Monday Night Raw from September 27, One, two, Now, the one against the model, Rick Martell. Hmm. Yeah. Cracking match, cracking yes. match, you know. And yes. you're, you're in there with a guy who's another cracker as well, you know. Two I mean? sexy absolutely boys good. as well, two good looking, two good looking alpha males, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And everyone knows I was a huge Rick Martel fan oh. at the time. Bob Bowden, in the can match, connection, strike force, the model, the whole lot. Like, do you reckon you could just smell the arrogance in that ring? No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could have bagged the sweat out of that match and sold it on the internet. Um, no doubt about it. Great show, um, yeah. It, it, Great show yeah. on that match. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a fantastic match. I went back and I looked at it, and it was actually one that that jumped to my mind because, as I said, everyone thinks of the ladder matches and you know those kind of matches that the match with Brett and stuff like that. But he had a lot of really really good matches as well. And then you kind of balance that out with kind of the Austin thing, and you know, but um. Yeah, it's just it's 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 just one of those things. It's it's you know where 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 do we begin? You know where where does it begin and does it end? I mean, if you get down to his accolades, look what he did in WWE: four times IC champion, twice Hall of Famer, went in as Razor Ramon and with the NWO, two times Slammy Award winner, most spectacular match nineteen ninety four. Who would argue with that? Yeah. Um, you know, match of the year nineteen ninety six. You know, with Sean at SummerSlam. Some Very people much. argue that that was better than the Mania match, you know. So, and then you went to WCW, television champion one time, United States champion twice, seven times tag team champion, six times with Nash. You you mentioned earlier the bond with Nash, yeah. Um, and one time with obviously Big Show, the Giant, and then obviously World War Three. You know what I mean? So his his accolades stand up in the history of the business, and as you said. When you talk about the stuff with DDP and stuff like that, and I, I don't think DDP, he, he gets his flowers, but I don't think he gets enough for what he does. Um, when you think about Scott Hall, Scott Hall, we, we could have lost Scott Hall through that situation probably when he was 53. Mm -hmm. And then we wouldn't have had the Hall of Fame. As you said, there's, there's a lot in his career there. And even though he's only he was sixty three when he passed, there's a completion kind of to his career through his accolades and his Hall of Fame and stuff like that. And I often look at careers sometimes when they didn't like we compare it like the Warrior as well, who came back and got his Hall of Fame, made peace with himself, completed that sort of situation as well, you know. And I think it's really important that that happens. I don't think there's anything worse than if you're you know you're in love with a wrestler and he's in your fandom and you follow him all the way through. And you suddenly lose them suddenly, and there's business that's incomplete. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I, I, I really like. I, I, although they have to deal and stuff like that, is there anything worse? The toughest thing I've seen a family up there at the Hall of Fame with their father or their mother getting inducted in who isn't with us anymore. Yeah, and I think I think that, that to me is really tough. I think if you if you give up your life to the business and it takes years off your life, there's no doubt about it. You should be the guy who stands there with the ring on the finger saying the Hall of Fame. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. just yeah. um it's it's just one of those things. And as you said, there's a certain completion, I think, to his career because he was able to do that through the work with DDP and his own ambition to turn his life around. Um and that's 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 the biggest thing we can say about him, really. You know what I mean? It's, um he certainly left his mark on the business and 30 years from now, people will still be watching his matches and talking about Razor Ramon, Scott Hall, the NWO. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that's the best way to kind of end the show, really, because you can't really um, pay the man any bigger tribute than that. You know what I mean? It's all well and good, um, you know, doing it for the fans when the lights are on, but it's what you do, you know, in your personal life for your own family and your own friends when the lights are off and the camera's away from you. And I think that's... Yeah, and especially especially now with social media as well. With social media now, the, the fan base in pro wrestling now, it's not so much about the matches and about the moments. They want to know about you, the person, and your life and what you do. And, you know, it, they delve into, like, you get up in the morning, what did you have for breakfast? Do you do yoga? Do you go to yeah. the gym? What's a day in the life of these guys like? And that's what they're more concerned about more than anything. And yeah. um, the matches obviously stand up for themselves, you know what I mean? We we seen it the other day there with uh you know Big E who had that accident in the match there the other day and broke his neck and stuff like that and all, you know what I mean? And it just goes to show that it's such a fine line in this business with these careers and stuff like that. You can be on top of the world earning millions, and the next minute, bam, it's taken away from you, just like that. And it's um yeah, it's look, it's another legend gone. It's one yeah. third of the NWO has left us. Um, it, I, I just find it though, it's, it's, it's astonishing. Like, you know, I, I kind of look, sometimes I look at these guys and I wonder, like, you start thinking, is Hulk Hogan immortal? Is he actually immortal? Because you think about Hulk Hogan and how he outlives all these guys and he's still there, still looks the business. You know what I mean? And you just Rick sometimes Flair. you think, Ric <laughs> Flair, Hulk Hogan, these guys, you know, even, even Sean Waltman, you know, who's like, that guy has probably killed himself a million times, and yet he's still here. You know what I mean? And then, and, and then you look at some of the guys. You know, I know I bang on about them a lot, like and rightly so. But then you look at the likes of Brett. You know, stroke mm. victim, two strokes. Yeah. You know, yeah. cancer, cancer survivor. You know, yeah. and 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 like pretty much a year. I think there's only a year between him and Scott Hall. I think he's a year younger, even, or else yeah. the same age. Um, it, we're very lucky to have these people. You know, Shawn Michaels bringing himself back from you know, his own demons yeah. and stuff like that. Jake mm. is still with us. Yeah. Um, we, you know, all we, we only talked on the phone this morning. We, we had a, about an hour-long conversation this morning. To, uh, amongst other things, we were talking about um, Buff Bagwell now, you know, yeah. trying to get himself sorted out. with. Because yeah. Buff seemed to take that really bad yeah. on Twitter, looking at him on Twitter. Um, Absolutely. Because Scott, you know, yeah. and the NWL done a lot for him. So yeah. it's like, cherish these guys while they're here you know what i mean because just i mean going in for what he thought was you know albeit hip surgery is a big surgery but thinking you're going in to come out better not going in to to not not come out out. yeah not come out yeah like i I say to guys all the time as you know i go on these wrestlemania trips hmm. every every year and you're going to dallas this year as well of course and i go to dallas this year and any of the guys who go with me or any of the guys who are kind of like first timers who are going and stuff like that I say the biggest thing you'll remember from this trip is when you go to WrestleCon and you walk around and you meet all these legends. You meet Jake and Rick and Hacksaw and, you know, Teddy Long and all these guys. guys, Honky Tonk Man and all these guys. That is the highlight of my trip every year. It's not necessarily sitting in a stadium with 100,000 fans. That's Mm. absolutely brilliant and it's a spectacle. But to be able to walk up to Hacksaw and have a conversation with him and honky tonk and get a picture and get an autograph and reminisce about matches and the old times. And, you know, I'll go up to honky tonk this year and we'll chat about SummerSlam. We'll chat about the ultimate warrior. We'll, we'll chill the fat and have a laugh about stuff. I did it with animal out of the road warriors when we were there. And, you know, I always go to those guys, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's, um, 
it's a big part of my life, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's a part that I cherish and I cherish every moment that I talk to them. Um, I spoke to, and then you think about the effect that they had. So you're speaking of the NWO. Um, I was over there three years ago at a WrestleCon and I met up with the, the Blue Meanie, BWO, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was kind of NWO, ECW kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the guys who comes into the shop, he wasn't too well. And he's a huge uh, Blue Meanie fan. He's a huge ECW fan. And I asked your man, Brian Heffernan, I think is his yeah, name, yeah, the Blue yeah. Meanie, yeah. Heffernan. And I said to him, I said, look, there's a guy who's back home. He's not too well. I said, he's, um, he's trying to get through it. And I said, he's a massive fan of yours. And he said, let's get the phone on here and crack a video and pick him up a bit. And he made a video for about two minutes, wishing him well and talking about him and talking down the camera to him and all. And I sent your man the video and he was just, he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. And that's just, you know, two minutes out of this guy's day to care enough about a guy who's 10,000 miles away, who cherishes him. You know what I mean? And it's just, and, that, and that's, that's, you know, some of these lads, you hear stories and they get bad rap over stuff and stuff like that. But I think down beneath it all, they're genuinely good human beings who are trying to figure out life that has gone by them now through the business. And they're trying to figure out, well, where do I fit in life now that my career is done or whatever else is done, you know? And I just yeah. think it's um, it's a bad rap at times, you know, but it's um, most of these guys are great guys. I have great fun. WrestleCon is a highlight of my trip every year. Yeah, and I'm glad you, you kind of said that because, like, I'm fortunate enough to have kind of, you know, learned to be in the business for a minute, you know what yeah. I mean? And, you know, done a few bits over this side of the world, never made it to the big stage, but that's fine. But, help, mm. but I've been very, very fortunate enough to have a lot of friends that have made it big time, as you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, one thing I do know about this business is that it ain't an easy life. And especially back then, especially in the old terms. Nowadays, we're in a different world where there's kind of programs where you can kind of get, you know, educated before and during your your career and blah, blah, blah. These guys back then were all in, you know what I mean? And it's very, very difficult. Like wrestling is a drug. I struggled to it. I struggle with it to this day. You know that, Noel, where I yeah. went back, came out, went back, came out. Like there's not a day that goes by where I don't you know, miss being in a, in a wrestling ring or just want to kind of run the ropes with someone or, you know, be in front of a crowd. It's a very, very addictive thing, but that's mm -hmm. on a small scale compared to these guys. So when you've kind of made millions of dollars and, you know, <laughs> you've been in... And, and lost millions of dollars. And lost millions, lost of, dollars. millions of dollars. You know what I mean? You I mean, know? you look at someone like Ric Flair, who's made 10 times, 10 lives worth of money. You know what I mean? And, and, and still to this day... Walks into the room, taps the shoulders, does the strut, does you the know whole what I mean? thing and all. It's, and, it's, you know what I mean? It's the same with Hogan. I'm glad you mentioned Hogan there as well, mm. because, you know, he gets a bad rap and stuff. But, like, there's another man who's kind of gone through shit too, you know what I mean? And come out the other side. And I thought that was very emotional the other day when he was in his bar. You probably saw the tribute with Kevin. You could tell he was struggling yeah. to get the words out. It was, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, and he gets a bad, bad rap for not caring, but these guys care. These are the these are their brothers. You know what I mean? Like these mm. guys were more brothers than the, the blood brothers that they legitimately had. You know, <laughs> than, mm. than the relatives. Yeah. They literally killed for each other. It was a yeah. The one the one thing that people forget is your health and your mental health doesn't know the size of your bank balance. No. You know what I mean? And that's and that's really that's really what has to be said for a lot of these guys, you know what I mean? They they really, and, and when a guy like Scott Hall passes away, who was so iconic in the business and had deep ingrained roots with the likes of Kevin, I mean, I can't imagine how Kevin Nash is feeling right now. And Sean Walton. Or Sean Walton. Course, and, yeah. and Hulk Hogan, of course. And, and anyone. Hey, and, anybody sure, that. Anybody. anybody. You know what Just, I mean? And I'm sure even, you see even some of the background stuff, like the stuff he was doing with, uh, I think he did stuff with Bailey and he was doing stuff with Sasha yeah. Banks back a while yeah. ago and stuff like that. Well, even even Ricky Knight, all, you as know? you know, Ricky Knight, friend Ricky of the Knight. show, you know, him, they brought him over that year that you're talking about meeting, yeah. you know, and, and they kind of sent him over here as well to do a few bits. Like Ricky Knight said he was, he, he just sat in there all day signing autographs, not a bother. Yeah. So like when, yeah, when, Kev, when, when he needed to yeah. be professional, Scott Hall was very yeah. professional. I seen a lovely video the other day. I don't know if you've seen it backstage. It was when Zack Ryder had won the IC belt and right. he's backstage and uh, Scott Hall walked up to him and they were having a real genuine 
like Zach Ryder was such a fanboy journey, you know, Scott, <laughs> Zach Ryder who just won the IC belt and he took the IC belt off and he put it on Scott Hall's shoulder and all. And he goes, this is where it belongs and all this kind of thing. And they were chatting back and forward and, you know, Zach Ryder was talking about the moments that Scott created and such an inspiration to him and all this. And Scott was lapping it up and all. And then Scott and the reverse it around. He says, but you're brilliant too, man. And all. And he was giving him his props. And they were giving each other their props. But it was a lovely moment. But uh, Scott had the belt on him. And uh, it was a poignant moment because it was like he didn't want the belt to come off. And it was brilliant with Zach Ryder as well, because Zach Ryder wasn't in a hurry to get the belt back off. He would have left the belt there on the shoulder and all. And then Scott eventually took it off. But if you look at the way he took the belt off the shoulder, it was nearly like peeling off a layer of skin or something, yeah. something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he handed it back to Zach Ryder. But it was such an it was such an amazing moment. And you know, I'm sure even the likes of Zach Ryder or Matt Cardona would have hit him hard the other day as well. Yeah. Because these are moments. Like, how do you like? You're going to go back to those moments. Like, imagine winning the IC belt at WrestleMania. I think, I think it was WrestleMania where he won. It was, yeah. Because I think his dad was in the crowd. And I remember him. He was up on the ladder holding the belt, yeah. wasn't he, or something yeah. like that. It was an amazing moment. And I know his dad was in the front row. And that was, he had only come back as well, didn't he? Because they had put him out, sort of, he had gone. And he was recreating himself through the internet stuff and all that kind of he stuff. He lost it the next night on Raw then. Remember, that was the controversy. He lost it the next yeah, night on yeah. Raw. But, I mean, imagine imagine having that night at WrestleMania, you're backstage, Scott Hall, and you're like, talking about the inspiration of the IC title and, you know, discussing stories. And, like, he was just... Zach Ryder, he was just, he was like a kid, you know what I mean? It was like a kid runs in and you see your favourite wrestler and it's like you're holding the belt that he made amazing. You know what I mean? And I just I just can't imagine what that moment was like. And I'm sure I'm sure it hit all these guys so, so hard the other day. You know what I mean? Even people who have only been in the business maybe five or ten years, he would have had an influence on them somewhat either in maybe work he did in NXT or advice he gave people backstage or whatever it was. You know what I mean? And yeah, it was just uh, that's that's the part that they miss out on now. You know what I mean? That, that element of it is gone. Yeah, and, and like uh, according to you know anyone that knew him, like and Eric Bischoff, I'll always listen to Eric, um, because he always he he worked with the guys closely, and he said Scott Hall, believe it or not, was a great mind for the wrestling business. He really was. Yeah, he he he'd see it in black and white, no pun intended. Yeah, of like, no, nah, that doesn't make sense because what what's the point in doing that? You know what I mean? He took an invested yeah. invested interest, and and you know. I know he used to call out, you know, the likes of Brett and all that for taking the business too seriously and all that. But like as Jim Cornette said, maybe we need more of those guys now that take it a bit more serious, you know. Um, I think deep down yeah. Scott really took it serious too because you know these guys bled for yeah. this business, you know. Yeah, they really mm-hmm. did. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm. I have to say, it's one. <laughs> you never know how mm-hmm. you're gonna deal with you know a part of your childhood really isn't it yeah 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 absolutely it's it's it, it actually um when i heard he had passed away i started thinking again about dusty i started thinking about eddie guerrero i started thinking about rude perfect all these guys who had gone you know what i mean and it just it just brings it all flooding back really you know what i mean all yeah. those memories and stuff like that you know i have a little um i have a little sound boy here to finish out on yeah I hope it works properly now, right? But we'll give it a go. Hard work pays off. Dreams come true. Bad times don't last, but bad guys do. (laughs) Hard work pays off. That's it. And I think on that one, 